Evolution proceeds by random mutations to your DNA, your genotype. And the first order, this process is a little bit like monkeys typing on a typewriter. They're equally likely to type any sequence randomly. However, you are not your DNA, just like a recipe is not a dish. Your genotype gets interpreted by the process of development to some organismic property, which we might call the phenotype. And this mapping from genotypes to phenotypes is probably much better modeled by a different image of monkeys on a computer typing into a computer program. The monkeys might accidentally type a program like print 01 500 times, then give you a sequence of 1000 01s. And outputs like that are much more likely to appear than outputs that don't have short programs. Now, does this principle give us something we can observe in nature? Well, it does. In our paper, we looked at proteins, the molecular workhorses of the cell. Many appear as dimers, or trimers, or tetramers, or all kinds of multimer shapes. And most sh possible shapes are not symmetric at all. Very few are symmetric. And yet in nature, most of the ones we find are symmetric. In fact, here you see we're looking at hexamers, sixmers. And you see these ones are very symmetric, and these ones are much less symmetric. Our theory predicts that these symmetric ones should be exponentially more likely to be found because they've got short programs and they're easy to generate. Think about when you tile space. If I tell you take this unit and repeat it multiple times in a symmetric way, that's a short description. If you have an asymmetric description, I've got to tell you where every single thing goes, and that's a long description, much less likely to appear. And so our theory predicts the frequency with which you should see symmetric structures in nature, and they're much more likely to appear. And that is how algorithms explain how evolution works.